If diversity is such a strength, how much diversity is required? Where is the cutoff point? The left has no answer. Because there is no cutoff point except for the total and complete eradication of us as a sovereign people. Diversity is another word for weapon in the context of mass immigration, which has been tried and tested and does not work, never ends well. Today, the status and identity of the Irish nation as a unique, independent, ethnically united entity is under attack on a scale not seen since the plantations of the 16th and 17th centuries and more recently since the era of the penal laws. If anything, the onslaught on the Irish nation today is even greater than in previous centuries. I emigrated um, in 2009 and spent 10 years in Australia and came back home and what I came home to isn't Ireland that I know and want. Our government holds us in contempt and tells us on a daily basis how much better the country is the less Irish people there are in it. Now plain and simple. There's 13,000 Irish on the streets. I think those people have more of a right to be in any hotel in the country than bringing anybody else in. And apart from being the principal contributor to wrecking the Irish economy, mass immigration has displaced Irish jobs, created a massive black hole in the welfare budget funded by Irish taxpayers, and is used as the tool of globalised corporate business to keep Irish wage rates down so that Irish people must compete with foreign nationals for employment in their own country. But it's a serious situation now when people who want to be rocked out of their comfort zones as to what's happening in this country. And it's, it's the death of a nation. In a time when we have a so-called housing crisis, in which the prospect of the majority of young individuals and couples being able to own their own home within their lifetime is a far-fetched dream, most are shackled in the endless cycles of scraping through each month without enough savings to even fathom a house their own, let alone children. Our children are our future. Our children are our tomorrow. And we are below re replacement birth rates. And that's why they say we need immigrants, because um, we're not having children. We're not having children because the government has made the decision on whether to have a child or not an economic decision for most couples. Our youth here are very, very hard working and I can see that because I'm one of them and I can see all of my mates and they're all working, get up very early in the morning, straight to Dublin, they're plasters, skimmers, they're working on roads, they're doing everything. Very, very hard working people. Yet we're all poor, why are we all so poor? Burdened with debt placed upon their heads by the traitorous snakes in government who cooperated with the commands of the European Union in bailing out the now defunct Anglo-Irish Bank and showing their true loyalty, which lies not with the Irish people, but with the bondholders, global finance capitalists who want to render this nation destitute and therefore malleable to their corrupt whims of owning people as economic units. Our replacement and the dissolution of our state has been visited upon us by the European finance capital and an anti-Irish government in favour of global financial gain. We care for each other. That's part of the national idea. That's who we are. As a nation, we are a family grown large. That was Pierce's phrase. A family grown large and a family grown large takes care of each other. It doesn't take care of the rest of the world first. And so far as they say we need immigrants, is uh, the diaspora is the first place you go to. These are your sons and daughters. They're your brothers and sisters, your cousins, your best friends, your boyfriends, your girlfriends, your nieces, your nephews. These are your family that want to get back here, but they just can't. We, our government right now, is neglecting them completely. They are out of sight, out of mind. They've gone abroad to the United States and Canada and elsewhere to try and make a new life for themselves because they do not believe that there is life in Ireland anymore. As long as this current regime continues, there will never be anything for them to come home to. Why is there a fundamental loss of faith in the future of this country at the very time, this very hour, that liberalism is completely and absolutely triumphant? There were smiles for the cameras, but off the cameras, it was like 
Why am I happy now? Everybody told me that if I got gay marriage, I'd be happy. If I got the Catholic Church out of the schools, I'd be happy. If I got the right to abortion, I'd be happy. Why am I still not happy? Because you're not pursuing happiness. You're pursuing the agenda of the elites, and you're pursuing their agenda into misery and poverty, and they don't give two dams about you. I will not accept this new Ireland. How can so many Irish be willing to lay down as if their grave has already been dug for them and be stomped into the soil by endless waves of immigration? Previous anti-Irish campaigns were waged solely by one country, Britain. Today's campaigns are orchestrated by immensely powerful pro-globalist elements throughout Europe and beyond, whose objective is the destruction of all nations and the removal of all homogenous distinct and clearly identifiable races of people. We here in the National Party are basically those few outliers at the back of the boat saying time to take this back. They left behind their slave mindedness. They left behind the idea that they were serfs and said we will stand up now and we will be free men and we will not allow our country to be controlled by any foreigner of any description.